join kids hat family congratulations tia I heard our librarian Miss Peters has asked you to help her in the library after school every day instead of just the weekend and I hear you will get paid for it also Thanks Tofu but I have politely declined her generous offer Why Tia Think of all the money you will get You won't have to rely upon the pocket money that mom and dad give you. You can buy so many things with so much money, Tia. Yes, that's true, Tofu. But if I spend so much time at the library daily, I won't have time to study or spend with you. Nobody makes a decision like that, Tia. Well, maybe I am like the country mouse. What did the country mouse do? Let me tell you. Once a town mouse visited his cousin, a country mouse, for lunch. Welcome cousin. It is so good to see you. They enjoyed a simple meal of fresh corn, wheat stock and refreshing cold water. After that, the mice sat for hours and told each other stories from their lives. When it was night time, They slept under the starry sky and were awakened by the gentle warmth of the morning sun. They continued talking over breakfast till it was time for the town mouse to leave. Cousin, thank you for the lovely time. Why don't you come with me and spend time in the town with me? The country mouse was so impressed with the stories she had heard of the life in the town that she readily agreed and left with her cousin. By the time they reached the town mouse's house in the town, it was afternoon and they were both very hungry. The country mouse smelled lovely aroma of the food left over in the dining room where humans had just finished their lunch. The hungry country mouse dashed towards it immediately when the town mouse called out, "Cousin, watch out for the cat." The country mouse scurried back to the hole in the wall where the town mouse's house was. Once the cat was gone, the country mouse tried to make its way to the food again. No, no. Wait for the servants and the house dog. The country mouse once again rushed back into the hole in the wall as it saw a parade of servants followed by the house dog come in and clear the table. The country mouse picked up his hat and bag. Cousin, I am very happy for your cozy luxurious town life. But I am happy in my humble country life where there may be simple food 
but at least i can enjoy it at my will and with security and so the country mouse returned to her home no longer feeling envious of her cousin so you see tofu miss peters might be offering me money but i am happy with my life the way it is oh dear you are the best you always know the right thing to do What is the matter Tofu? I wanted to be the class leader dear but I didn't win the poetry contest last week and today I accidentally dropped the fish bowl and it broke My teacher had to put the class fish into plastic bags and take them home Oh yes I'm sure I won't become the class leader now. I'm sure no one in class likes me now. Hmm. I understand why you feel like that, Tofu. But don't lose hope. Even the worst situations can lead to something nice. I don't think that can ever happen, Tia. Well, it happened to the musicians of Bremen. Musicians of Bremen? What happened to them? Musicians of Bremen. Once upon a time, a man had a donkey. When the donkey grew old and sick the man decided to kill him and sell his skin The donkey understood his master's plans and ran away and took the road to Bremen I will go to Bremen and become a musician On his way he saw an old dog lying in the grass Dog what are you doing here I have become so old I cannot gather the sheep for my master like I used to so my master beats me Why don't you come with me to Bremen we will become musicians there The dog agreed and the two new friends continued their journey. In some time, they came upon a cat sitting by the road. Looking like the skies were about to come down on him. Cat, what's wrong with you? Why do you look so sullen? It is my mistress. I have grown old and cannot chase the mice like I used to. So she has planned to get rid of me by drowning me in the river. Oh, that's not nice. I have an idea. The donkey and I are going to Bremen to become musicians. Why don't you join us? You can sing a jolly tune too. The cat liked the idea very much and made his escape with his two new friends. They had only walked a while when they came upon a cock. He was singing without a stop. Cock, what is wrong with you? 
This is not the hour for you to sing. Well, my mistress is having a big dinner party over, and she has instructed the cook to cook me for a soup. My head will be cut off this evening, so I am singing till my neck and throat are intact. Is that it? We all are going to Bremen to become musicians. Why don't you come with us? After all, you already know beats and tunes. And so the party set forth on their journey to Bremen, which was still very far. As night fell, they felt tired and hungry. We must find a spot to eat and rest for the night. Everybody agreed, and they decided to look for a place to spend the night. In some time, they came upon a lonely house. Its lights were lit. and they could hear the sounds of a gathering from inside <laughs> the cat climbed up a tree and peeped in from an open window <laughs> It is a gang of robbers and they have delicious spread of meats and drinks before them. I could use a couple of bones with some meat right now. And I could with something to drink. My throat is parched. Let us find a way to drive the robbers away. The four friends huddled together and at last came up with a plan to drive the robbers away the donkey put his front feet on the ledge of the window and the dog climbed over his back the cat climbed on the dog and the cock flew on the top of the cat's head once they were ready they all performed their music together The donkey brayed. The dog barked. The cat mewed. And the cock cockadoodled. The music was so loud that the windows of the house shook and threatened to come down upon the robbers. The robbers were scared by these unimaginable sounds and quickly flee from the house. As soon as they were gone, the four musicians took over the dining table and fed themselves full. Once they were done, they switched off the lights and went to sleep. I will sleep on the straw. I will sleep by the door. I will sleep upon the hearth by the warmth of the fireplace. I will sleep on this beam of the house. Soon they all fell asleep. A little away from the house, the robbers watched as the lights of the house went off. We shouldn't have been scared like this. One of you go back in and tell us what is going on inside the house. And so one of the men made his way back into the house. 
The house was so dark and quiet that he went to the kitchen to strike a light. But he mistook the cat's shiny eyes for coal and put a burning match to them. Shocked by the attack, the cat jumped on the robber and scratched his face. This scarred the robber and he ran towards the back of the door to find a way out of the house. But in the dark, he accidentally stepped on the dog that bit his leg. All the commotion woke the cock and he came flying down to land on the robber's head and cried, cock a doodle do cock a doodle do Ultimately, the donkey kicked him out of the house with his hind legs. The robber ran to the rest of the gang. Chief, the house is haunted. An evil witch lives there. She scratched my face. At the door stands a man with a knife. He cut my leg. In the backyard is a monster that hit me with a club. And on the roof sits a judge who screamed, Bring the knave up, do! Hearing this, the robbers got on their horses and left the house forever. But everything went so well for the four musicians that they decided to live in that house forever. And never made it to Bremen. So you see Tofu, even when you think that nothing is working out, all you have to do is keep trying and things will turn around. Thanks Tia. I always feel so much better after talking to you. You're always welcome, Tofu. so brave. Thanks Tofu. Will you please take care of the bird while I go and change? Yes. Did you save this little bird young man? Yes, I did. That's very good of you. You are a brave boy. While we take care of the little bird, can I tell you all a little story? Yes, yes we, we want, want a story. story! Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess. One day, her mother, the queen, told her that she had fixed her marriage with a prince. The son of our friend, King of Shazam, is a wonderful prince. You will be very happy with him. You must leave for Shazam immediately to meet the king and the prince. Take your maid with you and take this handkerchief. Any time you feel confused, keep it close to your heart and you will know what to do. Yes, mother. 
the princess set forth for her journey with her maid. But on the way, the maid changed her behavior entirely. I refuse to serve you any more. Now onward, you will be my maid and I will be the princess. And if you tell anyone about this, you will be cursed. Give me your clothes and possessions right now. The princess was gentle hearted and so she agreed. As tears rolled down her cheeks, she wiped them with her mother's handkerchief. Suddenly, it spoke to her. If the queen were to know of the maid's behavior, she would be heartbroken. Hence, the princess decided never to tell anyone about her true identity and went along as a maid to Shazam. When they reached Shazam, the maid decided to get rid of the princess. I do not need my maid anymore. You can assign her some other job. The minister assigned the princess to work on a geese farm with a man named Kurtkin. It was her job to take care of the geese. The princess learned everything about her job and became a very good goose girl. One day, Kurtkin and the princess got into a fight. And Kurtkin went to complain about her to the king. I do not wish to keep the goose girl. She is horrible and strange things happen around her all the time. Is that so? Let me investigate this matter myself. The king started following the princess. He noticed that she was a sincere and sweet girl and there was nothing wrong with her. He also thought there was extreme sadness about her so he decided to talk to her. Dear girl, is there a secret close to your heart? Yes, your majesty, there is. But alas, I cannot share it with anyone because no one should know about it. Why don't you tell it to the big boulder over there? It can't tell anyone anything. The girl agreed and told the boulder everything. She didn't know that the king was hiding behind the boulder and heard everything. The next day, the king went to the court and summoned the maid and told her the story of the princess and the maid and asked her, What punishment would be fit for such a maid? The maid did not realize that it was her own story and came up with the hardest punishment. Such a person should be flogged and sent away from the kingdom forever, your majesty. Correct. Guards, take this imposter away. She has been living amongst us as a princess, while the real princess has been toiling as a goose girl. 
flog this liar and banish her from the kingdom. The guards immediately grabbed the maid and took her away. That night, the king threw a gala ball and celebrated the real princess as his son's wife-to-be. That is a very good story. Thank you. What do you think, Tofu? Uh, you are right, dear. People who take up another person's identity are wrong. I am sorry, everyone. I lied to you all. It was Tia who saved the little bird, not me. Thank you for telling the truth, Tofu. Yes, thank you for telling the truth. It was very brave of you. Tofu? Oh, hey Tia. Your friends didn't stay? Oh no, they were just talking about how much fun they had today pulling Ken's leg. Ken? Isn't he the new boy who joined school? Yes, he the smallest amongst all. Everybody is taller than him, so it is easy to pick on him. Hmm. Just like the ant, is it? The ant? Yes. The Elephant and the Ant Once upon a time, there lived a huge elephant in a jungle. Because he was so much bigger than all the other animals, he always troubled them. In the same jungle, there lived a family of ants. They were a hard-working family who always kept to themselves. In the day, they would go to gather food. One day, as they were going, the big mean elephant threw water on them. with you. Why do you keep troubling others? Oh, shut up, you tiny ant. One more word out of you and I will walk all over you and kill you. The little ant had no choice. It kept quiet and went on its way. shouldn't pick a fight with the elephant. He is very ill-tempered and very, very strong. He could crush you. Hmm, something needs to be done about it. The next day when the ants were going to work, The tiny ant decided to teach the elephant a lesson. She quietly climbed onto the elephant and made its way to the elephant's trunk. 
and entered it. Once inside, she started biting the elephant. Oh, that hurts! The elephant tried everything but it couldn't get the ant to stop biting him or come out of its trunk. Such a big elephant became useless in front of the tiny ant. Please stop! Ah! Stop it now! Well, I hope now you know how others feel when you hurt them. Uh, yes, I do. Please, please stop now. Very well then. And so the ant stopped biting the elephant and came out of its trunk. I am sorry. I have understood how bad I made others feel. I promise I will never ever do it again. Oh! Oh what, Tofu? I understand what we were doing wrong. You do? Yes. We shouldn't make fun of Ken just because he's smaller than us all. I'm glad you realized that, Tofu. Yes. And I am going to apologize to Ken the first thing tomorrow and get others to do the same too. Thank you, Tia, for teaching me this. Tia, today I am very happy. I met one of my friends who was acting all greedy and selfish in class. So I told him the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and he soon understood the lesson. Really Tofu? I haven't heard this one. I would love to hear it from you. The Pied Piper of Hamelin Once upon a time, there was a town named Hamelin. The town was beautiful, bustling with energy and wealth. But no sooner the happiness of the town was ruined by a plague. Plague of Rats There were rats everywhere. So much so that the people of the town didn't even have a place to keep a step without tripping over the rats. There were rats of every size, shape, every age and color. Nothing worked as a remedy. Not even the cats were able to control the plague of rats. Giving up, the authorities decided to announce a reward of 10 bags of gold to anyone who could help to get rid of the rats. One day, a strange-looking man came to the town. He was dressed in their traditional dress, but all red in color, with a long peculiar nose and big wide eyes. He adorned his head with a feather in his hat. He went to the authorities and said, Ah! I have a solution for your problem. I assure you 
that not a single rat would live in this beautiful town. But I want ten gold bags that you have promised as prize. The authorities were not very sure of his commitment but still allowed him to give it a try as they had no other option. Soon the strange looking man took out a Pied Piper from his pocket and started playing a very strange tune. Within no time all the rats started coming out and following him. From every nook and corner of the town, so many rats came out that the whole street was filled with them. Very strangely, the rats started following the Pied Piper who was playing the strangest tune ever heard. The Pied Piper took them to the town's river and entered into it. In no time, all the rats mesmerized by his tune fell into the river and drowned. There were rejoices in the town, celebrations all over. Soon, the Pied Piper went to the authorities to claim his prize money. But since their work was done and they thought that this plague would never return, they shun him off and asked him to leave without giving him a single penny. What selfish people are these? I did them a favor, freed them from such a bad epidemic and all they could care was to be greedy and ungrateful? Now look how I will teach these selfish people a lesson. The Pied Piper took out his pipe once again and started playing another strange tune. A tune that no one had ever heard before. In no time, all the children of the town, mesmerized by the music, started following the Pied Piper. The children were so lost in his tune that they didn't realize that they have come out to the outskirts of the town. The Pied Piper took them to a cave and let them in. He kept playing the tune till all the children were inside the cave. He then closed the cave with a huge stone. Only two kids were left in the entire town. A boy who was hard of hearing and a girl who had hurt her legs so badly that she couldn't keep up the pace with the rest of the kids. These two kids went back and told their parents about the Pied Piper and how he lured all the children into the cave. Soon the authorities went begging to the Pied Piper and requested him to let their children out. 
this time they promised to reward him with 20 gold bags i don't trust you any longer i want my prize money beforehand soon he was handed over his prize money and he left never to be seen again the children were freed from the cave and the parents hugged them and cried watching this the authorities said we surely have learned a lesson this man came out of nowhere and saved us from an epidemic all that we did in return was to be selfish and ungrateful he surely taught us a lesson of not to be greedy and selfish that night the town rejoiced and celebrated like a festival it still said that in the town of hamelin if you ever go and listen carefully you might hear the beautiful sound of the pied piper tofu i'm so proud of you you must be a little naughty but you surely are a good boy <laughs> For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.